carboxylic acids and their derivatives. There are three learning outcomes in this topic. The first one is the physical properties of the carboxylic acid, followed by the preparation of the carboxylic acid. And the last LO is the chemical properties, or also known as the reaction of the carboxylic acid. In this video, we just want to discuss about the first LO, which is the physical properties of the carboxylic acid. This is the outline that what do you need to know about the physical properties of the carboxylic acid, starting with the introduction of what is carboxylic acid, its physical appearance, boiling point, solubility, until the acidity of the carboxylic acid. So, what makes a carboxylic acid? The key feature is the carboxyl group COOH which consists of carbonyl, C double bond O, and hydroxyl, OH, both attached to the same carbon. The OH part is responsible for its acidic properties. As you have learned in previous semester, the general formula for carboxylic acid is CNH2NO2. For example, ethanoic acid has the formula CH3COOH. It has two carbon atoms, N is equal to 2, four hydrogen atoms, two N, and two oxygen atoms fitting the formula perfectly. In terms of general formula, the methyl group CH3 in ethanoic acid can be replaced by R, which represents any alkyl group forming different carboxylic acids. If R is just a hydrogen atom, we get methanoic acid HCOOH, also called formic acid, which is, which is found in ant venom. If R is a longer alkyl group, we get straight chain or branch carboxylic acids. But here, a something to note, R is not always an alkyl group. It can also be cyclic or aromatic ring. But in that case, the general formula CNH2NO2 is no longer applies. This formula is only valid for R is an alkyl group or hydrogen atom. Now, we go for the derivatives of the carboxylic acid. So what is actually carboxylic acid derivative? It's actually any compound form when the OH group in COOH functional group is replaced by another atom, for example, the halide to form acyl halide, or group, for example, alkoxy to form an ester. But what about the aldehydes and ketones? They also contain C double bond O, but they replace OH groups with H for aldehyde and R for ketone, isn't it? But actually, they are not the carboxylic acid derivatives because they don't come from the carboxylic acid by simply swapping the OH group. Instead, they are formed through different pathways. Now, let's look at the main carboxylic acid derivative arranged from the most reactive on the left to the least reactive to the right. The most reactive is acyl halide followed by acid and hydride, ester, carboxylic acid, and finally the least reactive is the amide. So what does actually mean for a compound to be more reactive? A more reactive derivative will react faster in chemical reaction. For example, acyl halide react most instantly with water forming carboxylic acid, but the amide are so unreactive that they are require a strong heating or the catalyst to break down to form the carboxylic acid. Now let's talk about the physical appearance of the carboxylic acids. The first few members like methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid and also the butanoic acid are colorless liquids with strong sharp order. As the carbon chain gets longer, they become wet solids with little to no smell. So, why does this happen? It's mainly due to the van der Waals forces. As the carbon increases, 
these forces get stronger leading to higher melting point. That's why the short chain acids are liquids, but when it gets longer, it becomes solid. Now let's discuss about the boiling point of the carboxylic acid. There are several factors that affect the boiling point of the compounds. Okay, but the most important thing is the strength of the intermolecular forces. The stronger the forces, the more energy needed to separate the molecule leading to the higher boiling point. So we have three main type of intermolecular forces. The first one is van der Waal forces, or more accurate to say, London dispersion forces, which is the weakest type of the intermolecular forces, which exists in all molecules and get stronger as the molecular size increases. The second one is the permanent dipole-dipole interaction which present in polar molecule. And the strongest type of intermolecular forces is hydrogen bonding which occur when hydrogen is directly bonded to oxygen atom, nitrogen atom or fluorine atom. Carboxylic acids has high boiling point due to hydrogen bonding in addition to van der Waals and permanent dipole-dipole as well. For example, these four compounds has almost the same molecular weight from 58 to 60 gram per mole, but butane only has London dispersion forces which are weak and it has the lowest boiling point. Propanol is polar, so in addition to London dispersion forces, it has permanent dipole-dipole interaction making its boiling point slightly higher. Propanol has hydrogen bonding, but also experience London dispersion forces and permanent dipole-dipole interaction giving it a significant higher boiling point than propanol. Like propanol, Ethanol acid also has all three types of forces, but do you think, why do you think uh, the boiling point of the ethanol acid is even higher than the propanol? The key reason is dimerization. Carboxylic acids tend to form dimers through hydrogen bonding. The result is a stable ring-like structure held together by two hydrogen bonds. When molecules dimerize, they behave like a larger, heavier unit. This increases the London dispersion forces between the dimers, meaning more energy is needed to separate them into individual molecules. As a result, the boiling point increases significantly compared to other compounds with similar molecular weight. This explains why ethanol acid's boiling point is even higher than the propanol, despite both having hydrogen bonding. The next factor that affects the boiling point of the carboxylic acid is the carbon chain length. As the carbon chain gets longer, the molecular surface area increases. A larger surface area means longer, uh, stronger uh, London dispersion forces between the molecule. Since these forces are stronger, more energy needed to break them, resulting in higher boiling point. For example, methanol acid, which has only one carbon atom, boils at 101 degree C. Adding one more carbon to form ethanol acid increases the boiling point to 118 degree C. With another additional carbon, propanoic uh, acid boils at 141 degree C. And finally, the butanoic acid with four carbon atoms reach 164 degree C. This trend demonstrates how increasing number of carbon atoms enhance London dispersion forces, leading to higher boiling point. The last factor that affects the boiling point of the carboxylic acid is the branching. As the branching increases, the boiling point of carboxylic acid decreases. This happens due to two main reasons. The first one is because the branching reduces the molecular surface area, that weakening the London dispersion forces. And the second one is because the branching prevents the molecule from packing closely together, making intermolecular forces less effective. 
For example, pentanoic acid with straight chain structure has the highest boiling point at 185 degrees C because it has the largest surface area that allows for the strong intermolecular forces and efficient packing. But when we introduce one methyl group at the second or third carbon as shown in 2 methyl butanoic acid and also 3 methyl butanoic acid, the boiling, point, the boiling point is decreases to 176 degrees C. This is because the branch reduces the molecule surface area and makes the packing less efficient. And when there are two methyl branches, uh, occur in 2,2-dimethyl propanoic acid, the effect is more pronounced that uh, lowering the boiling point further to 164 degrees C. So, in summary, branching reduces both effective size of the molecule and also its ability to pack tightly, leading to the lower boiling point. Okay, next, let's take a closer look at the structure of the carboxylic acids. Each molecule has two distinct regions. The first region is the hydrophilic head, which is the carboxyl group. This part is polar and can form hydrogen bonds with water, making it water soluble. The second region is the hydrophobic tail, which is the hydrocarbon chain. This part is nonpolar and repel water. The overall solubility of carboxylic acid depends on the balance between hydrophilic and the hydrophobic region. If the hydrocarbon chain is short, the hydrophilic region dominates, making the carboxylic acid soluble in water. But as the hydrocarbon chain lengthens beyond four carbon atoms, the hydrophobic effect increases, reducing the solubility in water. So, how does solubility work? It all comes down to interactions between solute and the solvent molecules. For example, in water, small carboxylic acids up to 4 carbon atoms dissolve well because the carboxyl group can form hydrogen bonds with water molecule. But as the carbon chain gets longer, the hydrophobic tail takes over making them less soluble. In non-polar solvents such as hexane, it is opposite. Larger carboxylic acid dissolve better because their long hydrocarbon tails interact through London dispersion forces. In polar organic solvent like ethanol or acetone, carboxylic acids dissolve regardless of the size. This is because this solvent can interact with both hydrophilic carboxyl group and also the hydrophobic tail, making them the best at dissolving carboxylic acids. The last physical properties of the carboxylic acid that we want to discuss here is about the acidity. Carboxylic acids are weak acids, meaning they are partially dissociated in water. The dissociation releases hydrogen ions, H+, and forms carboxylate ion, RCOO-. The key to acidity lies in the stability of the carboxylic ion. A more stable carboxylic ion can form more easily. This leads to greater dissociation and therefore more hydrogen ions in the solution. We use the acid dissociation constant Ka value to measure this. A higher Ka value means the acid more dissociated, form more hydrogen ions and increases the acidity. How about the pKa value? Since the pKa is the inverse of Ka, a lower pKa indicates a stronger acid. So, what makes the carboxylate ion more stable? As you have learned in the previous topic, you know that phenol is slightly acidic compound. But if we compare with the carboxylate acid, we can see here the cyclohexane carboxylate acid has much lower pKa value, 4.9 compared to the pKa value of the phenol which is 9.95 meaning that the cyclohexane carboxylic acid is much more acidic compared to the phenol. Okay? The dissociation of the phenol formation of the phenoxide ion, we have four resonance structure of the phenoxide ion but the dissociation of the cyclohexane carboxylic acid into the carboxylate ion, we have only two resonance structure. By right, the more resonance structure is more stable. All right? So should be uh, the phenoxide ion 
is more stable compared to the car uh, carboxylate ion. But in this case, it's, uh, that one is not true. Okay, It's because in the phenoxide ion, only one of the resonance structure, the negatively charged is carried by the oxygen atom. Another three resonance structure, the negatively charged is on the carbon atom. The carbon atom is less electronegative compared to the oxygen atom, meaning that the uh, that three resonance structure is not that stable actually compared to the first resonance structure uh, which is the negatively charged is on the oxygen atom. But for the carboxylate ion, both of the negatively charged is on the oxygen atom. That's why the resonance structure of the carboxylate ion is considered to be more stable compared to the resonance structure of the phenoxide ion even though the carboxylate ion only has two resonance structure uh, compared to the phenoxide uh, with the four resonance structure. Okay, you get it? Okay, now we move uh, to compare with the benzoic acid. So, uh, benzoic acid with the pKa 4.2 is even more acidic compared to the cyclohexane carboxylic acid. So why does this happen? It is because of the effect of the EDG and EWG. We have cyclohexyl in the cyclohexane carboxylic acid. Cyclohexyl is the EDG. So the EDG push the electron to the C double, uh, COO that uh, increase, slightly increase the electron density on the oxygen atom. But the aromatic ring uh, in the benzoic acid is the EWG that it can uh, withdraw the uh, negatively charged or the electron density on the oxygen that stab stabilize the ion. All right. So since the ion, uh, the benzoic ion is more stable compared to the carboxylic ion, that is why the benzoic acid has lower pKa value, which means the benzoic acid is more acidic compared to the cyclohexane carboxylic acid. Last but not least, we will discuss about the effect of electron donating group EDG and also the electron withdrawing group EWG on the acidity of the carboxylic acids. Here I show you three situations. The first one is about the opposite effect of EDG and EWG. EWG increases the acidity while EDG decreases the acidity. For example, ethanoic acid, the pKa value is 4.79, which is less acidic than methanoic acid with the pKa value 3.75. This is because the methyl group is an EDG. In contrast, 2,2,2-trichloroethanoic acid with the pKa 0.66 is much more acidic because three chlorine atoms are EWG. For the second situation, it is about the number of EWG. The more EWG in the molecule, the stronger the acidity. We can see here the pKa decreases from 2.86 for one chlorine atom to 0.66 for 3 chlorine atom. The opposite applies for EDG, where adding more EDG reduces the acidity, which is the higher value of pKa. The third situation is about the position of EWG. The closer it is to COOH, the stronger the effect. We can see here 2 chlorobutanoic acid which has much more lower pKa value than 3 and 4 chlorobutanoic acid. As the substituent moves further from COOH, its influence decreases. The same applies for EDG, but in opposite manner. Alright, we have now covered all the physical properties of the carboxylic acids, its appearance, boiling point, solubility, and also the acidity. Next, we will continue with the preparation of the carboxylic acids in the lecture hall. See you!